hey, we got quite a unique experience going on here, and maybe one that'll last for several episodes. We are in Honduras. We're at about 5,000 feet, somewhere around there right now, maybe just a little bit lower than that. We have not yet arrived to the coffee farm where we're gonna be visiting today. Yeah, cause the road, or what you might call the road, is out here. And we, we've been uh, probably an hour now, going about two miles. Uh, all of it's been passable until we got to this point. But there's gonna be a special guy here to take care of this. That's right, you know him as Johnny, but they call him Bombin. I think that means little bomb. They love this little tractor. It just arrived here, so you see the guys working by hand. That's because the tractor just got here. As soon as we get some lunch, we're gonna get this road cleared up so we can get on through. Let's get started. In some ways, this fits right in with tractor time with Tim. They're using little Johnny here. Well, he's playing way above his weight class, right? This really ought to be a dozer. But hey, they're extremely thankful to have this tractor. A church in Indiana actually donated this tractor. It's a church that we used to attend when we live in Carmel. And this thing has been a godsend. Um, they've got 350 hours on it now. I believe it had about 100 hours on it when they got it. They've had it for a year and a half, maybe a little bit more than that at this point. So over the next few episodes, we're gonna see how they use this thing. I mean, they they brag on it. That's how they gave it the name, Bombin, Little Bomb. They've done all this work by hand until they had this tractor. <coughs> you can see what's happened here, right? I mean, this is uh, just after the rainy season and all this soil has just slid off the mountain and it slides down on the road. We've actually had several smaller slides that we've been able to get around that we've been coming up through here. But this one has covered the whole road. And they say that this happens every year. Now, they can rent a dozer, but the dozer costs over $100 an hour. And that's not just $100 an hour while they're up here. That includes the two to three hour drive to get the dozer up here to where they can use it. So you start paying way down there. Now understand, $100 here is not nearly as easy to come by as $100 in the USA. They've welded these teeth onto the front of the bucket. We kind of wish they would have used a bolt-on tooth bar, but Truth be told, for what they're using the tractor for, the weld-on teeth may be fine. Jorge on the left here is the experienced tractor driver. He's the main uh, employee, or I think kind of one of the managers here. Uh, eventually, maybe. But he is the expert on this tractor, and Jeff is uh, the other approved driver for the tractor. They're very careful about who gets to drive the tractor. Um, this is very, very steep terrain. This is not a great place for a 1025R, but compared to those pickaxes right down there, this is a great place for a 1025R. Jeff's doing a great job with the bucket of trying to create a level road. Now, Kenton's here with me as well. You don't see Kenton in the scene right now, but you've seen Kenton in several other videos. What we wanted to see was their experience at driving the tractor, how they've actually utilized the tractor, and we've actually brought them some other attachments. To date, they've never taken the backhoe off of the tractor, so hopefully we're gonna be able to show them how to do that, 
show them a couple of other attachments that they might need to use. But before we do so, we wanted to see them using the tractor to see their experience with it, but more to see their needs. I mean, it's really hard to understand just by talking with someone what their needs really are. I'm quite impressed with the experience and, and just the way Jeff is handling this. Very nice. Now, if you'll notice, this tractor has wheel spacers on it. I'm not sure how wide the spacers are, but yes, they have tipped the tractor over at least once, maybe twice. So we got the wheel spacers for them. And uh, I think they've learned a little bit better of its limitations. I wish I could understand him. I think he's wanting to take this little hump off right here. You want to take that hump down? Is that? Yeah. Oh, big rock. Grande. I can get that rock. You can get that rock. I'll get in there and try it in a minute. There you go. More throttle. Maybe not. I thought I saw it move. Can I go over there? Okay guys, this is steep and it's also mucky. It's really muddy. I have almost no traction at all. I kind of go the direction it wants me to go. Oh, I love being on Johnny. I don't care what country we're in. feet it would be a great place for a turbo Johnny it would also be good to have hydros plus I'm it's kind of slow feeling but hey I guarantee you I can move more dirt with this than I can with a pickaxe because I'm not in very good shape
I need you to ask okay. Jorge if for advice. Ajá. Just, Un consejo. Sí. Necesita su consejo. Yeah. Uh, am I doing okay? Esto, voy bien? Okay. Sí. Can I push this down into that hole down there? Puedo or, empujar todo eso a caer en ese hueco abajo? Sí. So we'd like to have the dirt smooth up through the, the roadway out there. Here, but yeah, and then you can push more into that <coughs> hole down there. So does he want this to try to be dug out down to there? Or, uh, or is it just let Pero it... Pero lo quiere solo una raspadita, va? Sí. ¿Cuántas pulgadas más tiene que bajar? Por lo menos. Ah, okay. así. How far? Oh, cutting off like several inches up there to make it not quite as a steep. Not quite as happen. steep. Yep. We're getting pretty close on this section, but I was seeing a washout down here at the bottom of the hill, and I thought I'd put some dirt in there. Really probably be better to have some bigger rocks, but you'll see what kind of drop off we're dealing with here in a second. Get everybody else out of the way. Yeah, that's right. It might not look too steep here in the video, but I was a little concerned that rock would just start rolling and go right down there and, well, run people over. I'm going to put this big rock in that hole, thinking maybe it might hold it. Obviously, that loose soil I'm putting in there is not going to hold that rushing water in the winter, but this big rock might. Okay, good enough. On to the next section. I want the ditch to be next to the edge rather than out in the road. This is pretty hard for him to do by hand. You can see the little shovel ditch that they dug, but that's pretty hard to do. Our friend down there was saying that that area down there is nasty where that rock is and then if we have extra dirt we could also throw it down there to because so okay. the car doesn't tip so much okay FYI. okay it looks like the ditch needs to go if possible looks like we need the ditch over there next to the side right to build this road up here so that it won't hold water. I'm not sure that I'm using the best soil. This is actually, it almost looks like soil that would grow something. I probably should be using more rocky type soil from up on the hill, but I don't know the soil very well. It's not something I can learn in a few hours, you know. But the idea is to build this up higher and then maybe water won't stand in there. So I'm trying to borrow the dirt from the side here where the ditch it needs to be. So 
So standard road techniques, right? Build the road up high, have ditches along the sides. I'm gonna go back out and get some of this drier sand. If I had it to do over, I'm not sure I would have done this. The sand just didn't hold very good. First time they drove the truck through it, it made a big rut. But I didn't have any other more solid clay soil nearby. I couldn't get a hold of any rocky soil. It, I just not real satisfied with that. The structure on the left is used for their coffee processing. So it's built up high uh, so that gravity flows down into the concrete tank of sorts. That's Well, it's off screen right now. Maybe we can show it later. Anyway, when we got here, they had the box blade parked under here. Well, I say parked. They had carried it by hand up here. But there was nothing else being stored under this structure, and it looked to me like a perfect place to be able to park the tractor out of the weather. Unfortunately, there was no way to get the tractor in there. It's too steep right here where you can see that the tractor's backed up there. And then where the backhoe's digging right now, well, we needed to be able to drive the tractor there. So I'm trying to flatten out an area and then use the soil here to get a little bit of a less slope here so we can actually drive up through there. When I first proposed this idea, I'm not sure they thought it was possible. But they were patient with me and let me kind of illustrate my point and, well, we got her to work here. Just keep watching. The worst part is I was pretty rough on their nursery here. I kind of piled more dirt against it than what I should. But I'm certain that they'll be able to figure out how to resolve that either by moving the nursery a little bit or perhaps they'll just reinforce against that dirt. I didn't have much room to work here and well quite frankly this wasn't our goal today. Our goal was to be able to demonstrate how to take off the backhoe and, and get some of the other attachments hooked up. So I felt like uh, I was wasting a little bit of time and so I quit on this before we really had it large enough to be able to comfortably get the tractor in and out. But hopefully we can show a little more of this and show it actually functioning in the next episode. I didn't look at the serial number, but I think this is a 2017 model 1025R, the last year of the 260 backhoe. You'll notice it still has the spin around seat. It also has the H120 loader and the kind of rear angled drops like they started with. It had been a while since I'd operated one of the older machines and quite frankly, it feels almost identical to the new ones. The backhoe is not quite as smooth. It doesn't have the cushioned cylinders, but really it's not much difference. We didn't get any video of the backhoe removal today, maybe tomorrow on that, but we're gonna move on with some of the other attachments. From what I had heard remotely, I thought this wagon would be a perfect tool for them to be able to transport their coffee and maybe useful to transfer some aggregate or gravel or concrete mix or whatever for their roadways. So we'll show them how to hook up the hydraulics and see if we can make it dump. The black and the yellow is the dump. Hmm. The black and the yellow is the dump. That's these two. Oh, oh, oh. See the black and the yellow? And so unhook those. Well, negro. we need to run this both ways. Well, that's going to be a little hard, but there'll be a little pressure on there. As far as the order, which way you hook them up, uh -huh. it just it changes the direction that it operates. I did not get them any rear hydraulic solution, even a manual valve. Rather, I got long enough hoses to plug into the mid-SCV. We're not in a level spot. I just wasn't sure having extra components was a good idea. They don't have much way to get service repair parts, etc. So I wanted to try to keep things simple. 2,000. It may be... The cylinder, the cylinder will handle more than the uh, frame of the... And I can drive that behind the tractor on this, on this road with the... Is it safe? I'm not an expert on hills. It must have it must have it down, but turns out their concern was about being too tough on the transmission pulling it up a hill. My concern was about the wagon pushing the tractor going down a hill. Off camera, we just encouraged them to start with smaller loads. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I could have picked a better place to dump. Okay, the so the issue was that it wasn't level. Uh -huh. 
but it's in now. The whole reason for this is the dump. I thought that would help yep. them. No, no. I thought the dump, obviously we didn't have an infinite budget for this. Kenton and I uh, donated most of this and, and we just tried to find some attachments we thought were the best for their application. Now, none of us are saying that a 1025R is the best machine for these hills. None of us are saying that, but it is much better than a pick and shovel. And we're thinking that with the box blade, they already had the backhoe. Uh, we had to get the three point arms. By the way, if you want to get a full set of three point attached arms for a 1025R, there, you'd say, why would you ever want that? Well, you want that because some people sell the backhoe with the tractor and they forget to include the three point arms. And that's what happened here. This tractor again was donated, but they failed to include the three point arms. If you want to get a full set, there's a bunch of different pieces. There's no kit. However, we have a kit at greenpartsstore.com slash TTWT. We put this kit together specifically to solve this problem because it's a little bit confusing. Not cheap, but at least you can get all the pieces for your three-point hitch. Now, we cheaped out a little bit on ours and got a third-party three-point uh, top link here, so we thought that would be good enough. But we've got a hydraulic dump wagon. Um, I think this is a 3,000-pound wagon. Either that or it's a two-ton. It's, uh, it's, it's meant to be fairly heavy duty. Uh, we've, as you've seen, we put a full 24 by four cylinder. So that's, uh, and it's got a huge ram in it. Um, the cylinder should be much stronger than the wagon frame itself. We've tried to train, Felipe. Have we, do you think we've done a fairly good job here today of, do they think they understand? Oh yeah, this has been immensely helpful. Um, just learning how to take off the backhoe and how to put the three-point hitch on and the the other implements that we'll be able to use with this will be huge long-term for maintaining the road and everything. Yeah, Bombine is an incredible machine for you guys. Yeah, and we couldn't, I mean, it would, what we did in a half an hour coming up here, he said that'd be an all-day job for those three guys. Absolutely, step in here, Kenton. Oh, sure. Now, there's a little relation here. You guys have seen Kenton on our program before, right? You, you've been on our program many times. Yes, indeed. And you happen and to know this guy. I do. Just slightly. This is Kenton's son, Felipe. <laughs> I'm disappointed in your in your choice of attire today. Although you're sporting the yeah, name of the mission. Yeah, I have the name of the mission on today. His <laughs> eyes on Duras.org. His Dot eyes. Com. His Dot eyes com. on. His, eyes. his eyes Honduras.com is the website if you'd like to learn more about this. This is a, a multifaceted mission. We'll maybe talk some more about the different aspects that they have going on. Quite a mature mission organization, actually. You've been here for 20 years. 20, yeah, 22. You're old. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what does that make you? <laughs> yeah, it makes me older than dirt. <laughs> yeah. Coffee up here. Um, we'll get into that more tomorrow. Yeah. What do you think? Yep. You get to, you get to eat some raw coffee. I don't oh, like I can hardly wait. coffee of any kind, so I don't think this is going to work for me. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Okay. Hey. 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 We've learned, he said. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with Tim. Tim. Ateo. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And then I said, Here am I, send me. Así es, Timoteo.